my friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another WW weekly meal prep. I am so excited to share these recipes with you guys. Everything is so good, so indulgent, but it is all WW friendly. So that is amazing. You're gonna see my breakfast, my lunch, and a sweet treat that is moving us into the direction of fall, which is my favorite time of year. So if you wanna see what's on my plan for this week's meal prep, then all you have to do is keep on watching. For my breakfast this week, I'm so excited. I am making chocolate chip cookie dough overnight oats. I haven't made overnight oats in a while. We're rounding out summer. It just sounded like a good cold breakfast. I'm also going to pair this with some scrambled eggs. So let me show you what you're going to need for our overnight oats. So of course you're going to need a container of some sort, whether it's a ball jar or just a container to prepare your overnight oats in. Oatmeal, you can either use old fashioned oats or quick cook cook oats, whatever your preference is. I find that old fashioned oats just keep me full longer than quick cook. So I'm going to go ahead and use the old fashioned milk. So I'm going to do carb master. You could also do almond milk or coconut milk. One of those, any type of brown sugar alternative. So I'm going to be doing sucrin gold, mini chocolate chips, vanilla, Greek yogurt, and then peanut butter of some sort. So you could do PB2 or any type of peanut butter, powdered peanut butter. So that is what is in our oats. So let's get started. So let's start putting together our oats. So what I have here is about a quarter cup of my fat-free milk. We only need enough liquid to fill the jar. So a quarter of a cup should be pretty good for that. Also a heaping tablespoon of your brown sugar alternative. Again, I am using the sucrine gold. Also a heaping quarter cup of oats. I measured out a quarter cup of my mini chocolate chips. This will get divided into all five of our overnight oats. I also mixed together one tablespoon of PB2 and some water, and you do want this somewhat liquidy because it is going to be part of the liquid of your overnight oats. And lastly, you'll need your container of your Greek yogurt. We're gonna use just a little bit over half of a container per overnight oat. So let's get together these oats, it sounds amazing. So I'm gonna first start with my yogurt and I'm gonna put that into the bottom and that way my oats and everything don't stick to the bottom of my jar. So I'm adding in a little bit of my yogurt, a little over half of my yogurt container. So I have that here in the bottom of my jar. To that, I'm gonna go ahead and add my tablespoon of PB2. Yum, you guys, this is already looking so good. I'm so excited. And then I have my heaping tablespoon of my sucrin gold, my overnight, or my, I'm sorry, my oats, my quarter cup, heaping quarter cup of oats. Now, once you get to this stage, your jar is getting a little full. So we are gonna take a spoon and we're just gonna give it kind of a quick stir. You can even add a little bit of your milk to get a little bit of the liquid in there. And then we're just going to stir this, make sure everything gets nice and combined. You do want to have some liquid in your jar in order for your oats to soak that up as it sits in the refrigerator. So a quarter of a cup of milk is pretty close to what you're gonna want to get that right consistency of your oats. So you can see here that I have my milk in there. I'm just kind of stirring, making sure that the peanut butter and everything gets mixed in really well to my oats. And then I'm going to add to the top, the best part, just a little bit of my little chocolate chips. Again, we're dividing that out evenly into five jars. So look at this, you guys, chocolate chip cookie dough overnight oats. So all we're gonna do at this point is put our lid on and it's ready to go into our refrigerator for the next day. So let's put together four more of these. So our overnight oats are done and you can't really see the chocolate chips but they are on top 
These, you guys, look so delicious. I cannot wait to have these. So let's scramble up some eggs so we can add a little protein with our overnight oats. So with my oats, I'm gonna have some scrambled eggs. So I'm gonna crack five full eggs, and then I'm going to do some egg whites just to kind of cut down on the calories and still get that big boost of protein. To my eggs, I'm going to add the Trader Joe's onion salt, my very favorite thing in eggs. And I'm also going to add in just some black pepper. So let's scramble up some eggs. So my eggs are cooking. And then as soon as these are nice and scrambled up, we're gonna put these into our little to-go containers. And I'll show you guys what my whole entire completed breakfast prep looks like and give you the smart points. So here is my breakfast for the week. I am really excited about this week's breakfast. So I have my chocolate chip cookie dough overnight oats. So each one of my overnight oats is a total of eight smart points. So it is a little bit high, but that's because you have Greek yogurt, you have PB2, chocolate chips, but it's okay to have an eight smart point main portion of a meal if you pair it with zero point food. So I'm going to have my egg. So I have one whole egg and some egg whites, five of those scrambled up, and then we're gonna have some grapes for zero. So even though our overnight oats are a little bit high, if you wanna modify it to lower the points, please, by all means, but I'm okay with eight points for my oats and then zero points for my eggs and my grapes. So my breakfast is a total of eight smart points. For lunches this week, I'm gonna be making tomato basil parmesan meatballs. I cannot wait. I'm gonna roast up some potatoes and have some Brussels sprouts. So let me show you what is in this week's lunch. So first you're going to need some milk. I'm gonna be using the Carb Master milk. You could substitute almond milk if that's what you have on hand. Italian style breadcrumbs, minced garlic, Parmesan cheese, 96.4 extra lean ground beef. Sun-dried tomatoes, make sure you get the ones that are not packed in oil and they are zero smart points. Fresh basil and eggs. And then I'm gonna have Brussels sprouts. These are just the frozen ones from Trader Joe's. 99 cents a bag. I love these Brussels sprouts. They are delicious. So I'll be having those. And then I'm gonna be roasting some potatoes probably in my air fryer, I think is what I'm gonna do while my meatballs are cooking. And I'm gonna be doing these petite medley. They're just yellow, purple, and red potatoes. So let's get started on this week's lunch. The first thing we need to do for our meatballs is chop. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut up my basil, pop it into a little bowl. I'm going to just dice up my sun-dried tomatoes into smaller pieces, put it in a bowl, and slice my potatoes in half and we'll put them in a bowl. And then I'll show you how I'm going to season those. So let's get chopping so we can start these meatballs. together our meatballs. So I have my one pound of 96.4 extra lean ground beef. I went ahead and added it to the a bowl. This is so easy. Everything goes into one bowl and that's what you're going to make your meatballs out of. So definitely a fairly easy meal prep and quick and easy. So I have my one pound of hamburger. To that I'm going to add one quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. Now I have this bigger chunked Parmesan I did kind of break it up a little bit, but I'm okay with big chunks of cheese. And then I'm also going to add a quarter cup of my Carb Master milk, my chopped basil, which is about a quarter of a cup. I didn't measure, I love basil. So in my opinion, the more the better. Also two cracked eggs and my sun-dried tomatoes. Again, I didn't measure. I just did about half of that full package of them. You can do them to your liking more, less. And then one half of a cup of Italian breadcrumbs. And last, but certainly not least, 
three cloves of garlic. So we're gonna go ahead and add all of that and then we're just gonna take our spoon and give it a nice stir, get everything nice and combined together with your hamburger and then we'll be ready to roll these into meatballs and we'll get these into the oven. But the smell of this is already making me excited for lunch this next week. We're ready to put together our meatballs. So I have a pan here with foil sprayed with non-stick cooking spray. And then I also have my meat mixture. It looks so good. Get ready, guys. We're going to use our hands to put together our meatballs. So I want about 10 meatballs. I'm going for five servings of the meatballs. So I can have the one serving each day for my lunch. But look at this. Yum, it's loaded with cheese and sun-dried tomatoes and basil. I'm really excited. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll out my meatballs. Again, I'm shooting for 10. And then we're gonna get this in the oven at 375 until our meatballs are cooked all the way through. And in the meantime, we'll put together our potatoes and get those into our air fryer. All right guys, here's our meatballs. These look amazing. These are gonna go in the oven at 375 and let's put together our potatoes. So for our potatoes, you saw me go ahead and cut these in half. To season these, I'm going to be using the Parmesan garlic mix from Walmart. It's delicious, it's zero points. So what I'm going to do is take some nonstick cooking spray and I am going to really kind of get my potatoes wet essentially with the nonstick cooking spray. That's just gonna help that garlic Parmesan mix stick just a little bit better to my potatoes. And it also does help them brown in the air fryer as well. So my potatoes are good. Let's add in our Parmesan mix. This is literally so easy and it is so delicious. The potatoes get that crispy, cheesy coating to them. Yum, so good. So just make sure that you get your potatoes as covered with the Parmesan mixture as you can. Generally, I do have a little bit left over in the bottom of my bowl. You can kind of see down there, there's just a lot of extra. And it, depending on the amount of potatoes or whatever you're using the seasoning for, you do sometimes have a little bit extra. And then although I have the oven air fryer, my air fryer also has a basket so I can cook in the basket as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just gently spray the bottom of my air fryer basket. And I'm just going to put my potatoes in there. Try not to get all that extra powder. It's just gonna go through the bottom of your, your air fryer baskets. Lay those out as even as you can in a single layer just like you would in any type of basket air fryer. And this is actually what was left in my bowl. So there is a little bit of the garlic parm mixture. And there we have it. I'm gonna get this into my air fryer. We'll get these nice and cooked and crispy. So I have my basket here in my air fryer. I just removed the little handle and I'm just gonna put it onto the bottom of my air fryer. And again, we're gonna go ahead and bump this up to 400 just because the Potatoes will get a little bit more crispy that way, and I'm gonna put it at 20 minutes, but I will check it about halfway through. And my air fryer does have a light, which is really nice because then you can kind of see your fo food cooking along in your air fryer. So potatoes are in, meatballs are in, and I'll be back to show you our completed lunch. Sorry for my air fryer noise in the background, but I just pulled out my meatballs, you guys. These smell so incredibly delicious. Look at that cheese and tomato and basil, yum. So I'm gonna let these cool for just a couple minutes while my potatoes finish cooking, and then we'll assemble our meal prep. All right, so my lunch is ready. So let's walk through what I'm having for lunch. So first I have three of the meatballs. These are the tomato basil Parmesan meatballs using 96.4 extra lean ground beef. Three meatballs, three smart points. You can't beat it. And these are good sized meatballs. And let me just tell you, they are outstanding. They taste so good. So I'm gonna be having three meatballs. I have one serving of the roasted potatoes with the garlic Parmesan mix. That is three smart points. Also, I have some frozen Brussels sprouts. I'll simply warm those up, add a little bit of spray butter, salt, and pepper. 
and that is zero. And then way over here, I have a big bowl of watermelon and every day I will have some watermelon as my fruit with lunch. So my entire lunch prep is three for the meatballs, three for the potatoes. So this entire delicious filling lunch is only six smart points. For a sweet treat this week for myself and my husband, by the way, he is so excited about this. I am going to be making pumpkin snickerdoodles. These are cookies, legit snickerdoodles with pumpkin and wait until you hear the smart points. So let me show you what is in our pumpkin snickerdoodles. So first you're going to need some baking blend or some sort of sugar alternative. So I'm just gonna use stevia in the raw. Also for brown sugar, I'll use sucrin gold regular flour. It calls for one egg. I am out of eggs, so I'm just gonna sub egg whites. You can definitely do that in recipes. You won't even know the difference. For spices, I have some ground ginger, ground cinnamon, and then of course, pumpkin pie spice. It does want you to add in all the pumpkin spice components, but if you just use the pumpkin pie spice, everything's already in there. So I'm gonna be using Dax. Dax is my all-time favorite seasoning in the entire world. They have over 20 different seasonings. They all contain zero salt. They're all natural, no MSG, amazing flavor. I mean, amazing flavor with no salt. So if you are looking to watch your salt, but you don't wanna miss the flavor, definitely recommend Dax. I do have a 10% discount code. I will put it here on the screen. Click the link down in the description box, enter my code, and voila, you can buy Dax for 10% off and free shipping. So with fall coming, me and Dax Pumpkin Spice are gonna be BFFs. So that is gonna be going into my cookies. Of course, some canned pumpkin, baking soda, cornstarch, light butter, and last but not least, vanilla. And if you didn't see my grocery haul, Trader Joe's vanilla is my favorite. They just changed this to a glass bottle and it is now four ounces for $9.99, which is a steal. So if you have a Trader Joe's near you, highly recommend. So let's get started on our pumpkin snickerdoodles. So let's get started on our snickerdoodles. So to my bowl, I'm gonna put in my wet ingredients. So I have one egg worth of egg whites. I also have one cup of the I can't believe it's not butter light and you can really use any butter you want you would just have to recalculate your points if you do go with a non light butter and then I have three quarters of a cup of canned pumpkin and a tip for pumpkin is do not buy the can that says pumpkin pie filling because it is loaded with sugar make sure that you buy the one that is just pumpkin puree like I did just canned pumpkin and then I'm also going to add about a teaspoon of my delicious vanilla extract and then I'm going to take my hand mixer here and I'm just going to mix this for just a second to get everything combined after you've mixed your butter pumpkin and vanilla and egg together we're going to add in our dry ingredients so I have three quarters of a cup of sucrine gold I have one teaspoon of baking soda I have three and a half teaspoons of cornstarch. Now, I do not have any cream of tartar and the recipe does call for that. I swore I had it. And then when I looked at my spice cupboard, nothing. So I would recommend adding the cream of tartar as the recipe suggests as well. I also have one and a quarter cup of my Splenda baking blend. I'm going to add a little bit of ground ginger. I really like the ginger taste in pumpkin, spice, anything. And there is ginger in the Dax. I'm just adding a little extra. So then I'm gonna really pump up the flavor here with the Dax pumpkin spice. I'm telling you, you guys, this is hands down the best pumpkin spice seasoning ever. I mean, it is amazing. And then I'm going to slowly add in my three and a quarter cups of flour. And I'm going to just use my hand mixer as I go and just slowly blend all of that together until I get the consistency of the dough that I want. I always like to hand mix in the last little bit of my flour just so that I'm not over mixing it with my hand mixture mixer. Wow. All right, so we're gonna mix in the last little bit of our flour here, and then we'll be ready to scoop our cookies onto our cookie sheet. I just wanna tell you, I tried just a tiny bit of the dough off of the 
mixer blade and it is so good you guys that dax pumpkin spice is a game changer i mean it adds so much delicious incredible flavor so i'm gonna get this finished mixed together and we'll get these cookies in the oven so i reread my instructions which is always a good thing to do and they do want you to chill your dough for about 45 minutes so i'm actually going to put this in the refrigerator let this chill and then we will bake our snickerdoodles so it's been about 40 minutes on our cookie dough so i'm going to mix together some monk fruit sweetener oh i haven't even opened this one yet Good to know. I'm going to mix together some monk fruit, which is basically a sugar alternative in a bowl here. Just enough. We want to be able to roll our cookies in this. So I have some monk fruit. And then I'm also going to just add in a little bit of cinnamon. And this is going to be what we roll our cookie balls in, our snickerdoodles, before they go into the oven. So just kind of mix together some sugar and some cinnamon. And I'm going to pull my dough out of the oven or fridge and we'll put together our snickerdoodles. Here is our cookie dough. It looks so good. We have our cinnamon and sugar mixture as well. And then I went ahead and just lined a baking sheet with some foil. Pulled out my cookie scoop. I did buy these cookie scoops off of Amazon. They come in a three pack. There's a large, a medium, and a small. We are trying to get, let's actually do this. That might be better. There we go. We're trying to get 36 cookies. So I'm betting that they're gonna have to be kind of fairly small. So I'm gonna scoop out the dough roll it and then i'm going to roll it here in my sugar and cinnamon mixture and then we're going to go ahead and put it here on our baking sheet give it a quick kind of push down just so that they flatten out during the baking process yum so let's get our 36 cookies rolled out rolled in sugar and cinnamon and as many as we can fit onto our baking sheet So the first batch of our pumpkin snickerdoodles are out of the oven. Yeah, my house smells incredible. It smells like fall and pumpkins and all my favorite things. So I am going to transfer these here to my cooling rack and get another batch into the oven. I'll be back to show you all of our completed cookies and give you the smart points. So here are our pumpkin snickerdoodles, you guys. These are delicious i just had one as part of a snack and i'm telling you these are absolutely outstanding that sugary cinnamon outside is so good they are super soft and chewy absolutely delicious so each one of our pumpkin snickerdoodles is only two smart points so you can have an entire cookie for two smart points highly recommend making this recipe Thank you for joining me on another WW Weekly Meal Prep. You guys, those overnight oats, so good. So incredibly worth every single point. And my lunch is amazing. I, that is the kind of lunch that is not only satisfying, but so filling that it prevents snacking in the afternoon, keeps you satisfied, gives you your protein, your carb, your vegetable, totally well balanced. And let's talk for a minute about this pumpkin snickerdoodles. Those are incredible. So good. I took some to my real estate office and they loved them. Two smart points for a full size cookie. Can't beat it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would take a moment and just hit that little button that says subscribe and the little bell next to it to be notified every time that I upload. That way you're not missing a single video. I would love it if you'd give this one a thumbs up and comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought of this video and what recipe is an absolute must make for you. And I'll see you guys all in my next video. Bye.